Okay, welcome back. We're talking about uh, systems today to get a basic understanding of the model of a system and um, how that contrasts this idea of a set. So a system is a set of elements that are interrelated and interdependent in forming an overall organization. So a very foundational idea here, a very general abstract one, because we can understand uh, many things in our world in this way, uh, but also a very powerful one and obviously core to the system thinking. So we need to learn a bit about uh, what this uh, model is, be able to define it and understand uh, some of the aspects of it. So one way of describing a system is contrasting it with a set. A set is simply a set of elements um, that are not organized or interrelated in any particular way. So if you had a, a group of objects on your table, a pen, a, a, um, a bone, a, a plate, they are a set of things because they're not working together. They're not organized or interrelated in a particular way. Um, then if you have something that is organized in a particular way, uh, we would call that a system. Um, so the human body is a system. Um, a house indeed is a system because it's organized all those parts in a particular way for someone to live in that house. So what makes a system is a network of connections and interdependencies between the elements and the overall organization that emerges when we combine them within a particular pattern to enable a collective function. So it's that idea of emergence that actually when we put these things together in a particular way, um, something different is going to emerge, an overall function. Right? So the human body is not just a part of cells. It's actually a system. We experience ourselves as um, an overall uh, entity, uh, a being that's able to do things as a whole rather than just a, a, a big part of cells, should we say. Uh, so business organization is, is one example, many people, technology, resources, many different elements, and they're all interrelated and interdependent in many ways to um, perform an overall function uh, that's delivering a product or service. Many other examples, transport systems, the human immune system, healthcare systems, uh, food systems, and so on. Those are systems, and this is the model we use for representing them. Um, so there's the elements in the center there. Um, and then the interrelationships between them. And then there's some boundary around that. It can be quite open or it can be uh, more closed and well-defined, but ultimately there is some limit to this system. And uh, the system takes in inputs and processes them in some way to perform a functional output. Uh, that is the function of the system, but also there's always some uh, inefficiency or dysfunctionality, and thus the system will create waste or entropy um, that is outputted also. Uh, and the ratio between the two is some kind of, uh, is the efficiency of that system. The system then exists within an environment, the broader environment, which is the other systems um, and entities that it interacts with. And that's the general model of a system. It can be used to describe uh, all systems. Uh, you can talk about your yeah, education system here. You can talk about an economy like this, an energy system a um, house, a uh, building, uh, whatever it is, a restaurant, should we say. So very powerful uh, model, very abstract one, but very powerful for helping us to contextualize um, a broad range of entities within the same, same model. And absolutely key to being a systems thinker. This is how we need to look at the world and try and understand things. Um, and it'll give us a shared language to do that.